This is the book of Second Edgers, chapter 8 and verse 50. And it says it reads, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. All right, Brakatha Yahweh. All right, Brakatha Yahweh Shai. All right, Brakatha Yahweh. Brakatha Yahweh Shai. Brakatha Yahweh. Brakatha Yahweh Shai. All right, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory. Unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha Kodash. All right, I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, which rule well. And I want to give all uh, peace, greetings, and salutations to all the Lekakim that's pushing his word and uh, truth and sincerity, you know, throughout the four corners of the earth. You know, and their brothers that's not wavering in the faith, you know, being diligent in the truth. You know, I say shalom to you, brothers, you know, and I say shalom, you know, to the few sisters that believe in all meekness and humbleness, you know, I say shalom. So I can, you know, uh, I'm your brother Zakaria from GMS Mommy Camp. And Lord willing, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash, you know, uh, Adawan Rathaza, you know what I mean? Lord willing, you know, so Lord willing, this lesson is edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel, you know. And my lesson today, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakadash, is going to be basically on great misery is going to come upon these people, man. All right, upon these heathens. All right, starting with Esau, either Edom. All right, upon two thirds of the nation of Israel here in Babylon. All right, and the rest of the wicked Israelites are scattered abroad, man. Judgment is about to come. It's going to be great miseries, all right, coming upon the whole earth because why? They're walking in great pride. These people all have walked in great pride, man. All right, and scripture says pride is, let's get that, is um, Sirach 10. All right, this book of Sirach chapter 10. In verse 12, it says the beginning of pride is when one departeth from the most high and his heart is turned away from his maker. All right. That's the beginning of sin. What well, pride for pride is the beginning of sin. I mean, uh, it's like verse 12. So like we're going to read verse 13, but Sirach chapter 10 and verse um, 12, it says the beginning of pride is when one departed from his from the most high. How about you, my shy? And his heart is turned away from his maker, man. All right, that's the beginning of pride. And that's why a lot of people are going to be put to death because why? They're not seeking the Lord power of Israel, as it says. All right, what is it, Second Chronicles 15 and 13? Second Chronicles 15 and verse 12 says, And they enter into a covenant to seek the Lord power. I how about Shemashah of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul that whosoever would not see the Lord power of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. So our people, you Israelites, you so-called Negro, Latino and Native Americans. All right. All right. We made a covenant that we was going to seek the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai. And, and the scriptures and we just read that whosoever would not see the Lord power of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great. Whether man or woman. So if you're not seeking the Lord, that means you, you're you being prideful. All right. And then you're going to get put to death. It's going to be great misery come upon you. All right. So back at Sirach chapter 10 and verse um, 12 again. So like it says, the beginning of pride is when one departed from the most high. How about you, my shot? And his heart is turned away from his maker. For pride is the beginning of sin. And he that have it shall pour out abominations. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them suddenly man and the lord's gonna overthrow these people suddenly man all right it's gonna be a swift destruction man america gonna get hit with 200 million nuclear warheads and also by laser fire from the chariots and it's gonna be destroyed in one hour man all right the lord's gonna destroy this place in one hour man all right so let's go back to um bear with me Second Edges. I'll read that again. Second Edges chapter 8 and verse 50. It says, For many great miseries shall be done to them. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride, man. That's why the scripture said, what, Second Edges 15? All right, Second Edges chapter fifteen and verse one, it says, "Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy." All right, you Israelites, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. 
and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. So we speak, supposed to speak, speak to the Lord's people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. All right. Also, the Israelite foreigners that scattered amongst the nations, that lineage go back to the Torah tribes according to their fathers. Are right, we supposed to speak unto them the words of Yahweh Bashamashah, the words of prophecy, man? All right, Jacob's trouble, all right? The hour of temptation when the C hip, right, the micro C hip is made mandatory. You're not going to be able to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to do nothing, all right, unless you have that C hip. But the Lord said, those who take it, they're going to be destroyed. And the Lord said, His service, he going to protect us. All right, he going to protect his service. Lord, no, pr we pray that we are part of that, that number. All right, that elect number. All right, so what we're supposed to speak to our people the words of prophecy, what in, and they are faithful and true. Verse 3, 2nd Edges 15 and 3. So, like it, it says, Fear not the imaginations against thee, and let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So, we're not supposed to let their unbelief. All right, their wicked imaginations no trouble us, man. All right, verse four says, "For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness." Those who, I, right, um, not having faith, you know, not believing on Yahweh Bashima Shah, you know, being prideful, I right, they're gonna die in their unfaithfulness, man. Verse five it says, "Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world." So this destruction is coming upon the world, man. All right, this this is because it's gonna be a world war, man. What America? Is where the main destruction is going to be at Babylon the Great, which is prophesied in the Bible, man, all throughout the Bible, especially Revelation 18 chapter, man. This place is going to be a desert. This, this place is going to get hit with 200 million nuclear warheads, also laser fire from the chariots. All right, it's never going to be inhabited again, only by desert creatures, man. All right, it says, Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death. And destruction. That's what the Lord is bringing. Death and destruction. Why? Verse 6 says, For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole world. I mean, polluted the whole earth. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. So wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, man. That's why this destruction coming. All right, I'm going to jump down to verse um, 14. 2nd Edge 15, 14 says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Meaning death and destruction, man. All right, this was coming. This was coming. All right. This is the book of uh, Second Edge 15 in verse 49. It says, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. That's what the Lord's about to bring, man. A lot of death, a lot of destruction, man. All right. Go to Second Edge 16. All right, what did Edger say? Second Edger 16 and verse 17. It says, woe is me, woe is me. Who would deliver me in those days? Because why? Ezra saw the destruction. Ezra saw the, the fierce anger of Yahweh Bashim Shai. He said, woe is me, woe is me. Who's going to deliver me in those days? And we in these days now, man. And we know that our Savior, our Lord Yahweh Shai, Lord, when we probably like, is going to deliver us. Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows. And great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death. So this is just the beginning. All right. You seen what happened over there in Syria and Turkey with that earthquake. I thousands of people died, man. In one in one um uh, in one um judgment, man. One earthquake, man. It says the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famines and great death, man. So it's gonna be famine and great death, lack of bread, lack of water, all right, lack of food. All right. Great death. People mourning. People sorrowing, man. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these shall come man? when these evils shall come? All right. What are we going to do? We're going to pray to you about Shema Shah because the Lord warned us. Strip say that in the last days, perilous times shall come. All right. What? When the last days now? All right. Verse um, 19 says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, meaning correction. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. So they're not going to return from their wickedness. They're prideful. All right. Men shall be lovers of themselves. All right. All right. Not disobedient to parents. All right. Rebellious. This is that same generation that was uh, during the time of Noah. All right, about to get judged. It says, for many 
um, it's like it, verse 20, second under 16 and 20 says, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Behold, visuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves of being good case. Yeah, they're going to think everything is all good. All right, the price is not super high, even though the price is high now. All right, but it's going to get more higher, man. Even so they think they're in good case. It says, and even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. So a lot of people are going to perish of famine and lack of bread. And the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy, man. A lot of killing, a lot of blinkies, a lot of shootouts, man. And the dead shall be cast out as dumb as shit. And there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. So that's the time we're coming into, man. All right. Since I quoted it, let's get it. All right. Second Timothy 3 and 1 it says, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. All right, perilous times gonna come, man. All right, and what a lot of people are gonna get put to death. Second Edges chapter fifth, uh, just like you. Second Edges chapter five verse one says, nevertheless, as as coming, or if you read, if you have the hard, if you have the actual uh, Bible, the apocrypha, which the Bible destruction group took out, is a really a, is originally part of sixteen eleven. If you read this in the red. You know, the pocket for book, it says as concerning the tokens, which that were tokens going to signs as concerning the signs or the tokens. Behold, the day shall come that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in a great number. That's meaning mass death and the way of truth shall be hidden and the land shall be bearing the faith. Yeah, it's going to be a famine of the word, man. This word not going to go out here. This word not going to continue going out. All right. That much longer, man. All right, because the Lord is about to, the Lord sent his prophets out to warn the people. All right, but now the warning has went out. A lot of people are going to get put to death, man. Verse 2, but iniquity shall be increased. I should say uh, because iniquity shall abound, the, the, the love of many is going to last cold, man. But iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest or that thou hast heard long ago. In the land, talking about here in Babylon, the great America. All right. In the land that thou seest now to have root, shall thou see wasted suddenly, man. So this place going to get wasted suddenly, man. All right. All right it's going to be a quick, fast destruction, man. Second Nedra chapter 8 and verse 3. There be many created, but few shall be saved. So only a few going to be saved, man. All right. Jump down to the second Nedra's ninth chapter. All right, second edge chapter nine and verse nine. It says, Then shall they be in pitiful case which have which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Those who who forsake the Lord, they're gonna dwell in torments, man. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Yeah, they got the bag, you know, they're doing so called good. But they don't know the Lord. They rejected the Lord. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law, meaning hated the Lord law, while they had yet liberty, because this is the time of liberty to return to the Lord and get your shit together, man. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, that's why the scripture say, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Because there's going to be a time that the Lord is not going to be hearing right, these people prayers, man. He only going to hear the elect, well, the Lord, he only hears the elect prayers, but, hey, it's time to seek him that you may have mercy. All right. Uh, when as yet place of repentance was open up, were open unto them. Look. Understood not, but despise it. They despise the words of Yahweh Shabbat They pull the shoulder. All right. They, they harden their head. All right. Verse 12. The same must know it at the death by pain, man. All right. So they're going to know it after death by pain. All right. Jump down to verse 15. It says, I have said before and now do speak. And I will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved, man. So it's got a lot of people that's going to perish, man. More people going to die than those who are going to be saved. As it says right here, 
verse 16, like as a wave is greater than a drop, man. All right, and that's a symbolic of as a huge wave. When you see the wave and that's like a drop from that huge wave, that's the uh, ratio, all right, of how many people are going to get saved and how many people are going to get put to death, man. All right, because the Lord is only saving, all right, the elect of Israel, all right. And if you are right, here in America, all right, if you're not part of elect, you're going to be destroyed, man, all right. You're not making it in those chariots because that's how our Lord is coming back in a so-called UFO, the chariots to deliver the elect of Israel, man. All right. So, you know, that was just a quick, you know, lesson, you know, had to put something on wax. You know, Lord, when it's edifying, man, the pride of these people, the Lord's going to stop it, man. All right. And they go, a lot of people going to get put to death, man. All right. Mass death. All right. So, Lord, when this lesson was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel, you know, I want to give all praises, all honor and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. All right. I want to give double honor to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone with Ruel. And I want to give a peace, greetings, and salutations to all the Lekakim that's pushing his word in truth and sincerity. Hey, Shalom, Mike, keep pushing, keep doing Shalom.